Hello guys, I'm here for my reviews of episodes 1 and 2 of Power Rangers Ninja Steel, essentially the premiere episode, split into two parts. It had to be continued, so it was split into two parts just with two different names. Uh, so episode 1 was called Return of the Prism, and it opened up a narration about our Red Ranger for the season, bro for the two seasons, Brody Romero. And it says that, uh, ten years ago, the Ninja Star Prism, or Mystical MacGuffin number 9000, came to Earth and landed in Dane Romero's backyard. That is Brody's dad. And he made Ninja, this thing called Ninja Steel out of it. Now, on the other hand, he was also being attacked by the villain Galvanax, who wants the Ninja Prism power, or whatever it is. Uh... And he told his son Aiden to hide the ninja steel somewhere. And Galvanax was holding Brody. And he wanted to exchange Brody for the ninjas. For the mystical MacGuffin. The ninja prism. The ninja's power prism. Or again, whatever. Uh, and as Dane was doing that, he ended up becoming a Red Ranger. But to stop Galvanax. But Galvanax ended up with the thing in space. And he took Brody with him. So, ten years, and then we cut to grown-up Brody in space, living with his best, his friend Redbot and Mick. Mick is a shapeshifter, and he's played by Boom from SPD fame. And Galvanax is hosting this reality, this game show, to try to find people to pull out the ninja stars from the ninja power prism. I might just start calling that Mystical MacGuffin, for the sake of this. A real... But, since that no one can, uh, Brody, Redbot, and Mick steal the Ninja Star Prism, and they end up crashing to Earth. That's when we get, we meet all our other Rangers. We meet the one who will become the White Ranger, Haley, uh, Haley, the one who will become the Yellow Ranger, Calvin. But for the sake of last week's first episode, we only saw the other two who would become pink and blue, Preston and Sarah. Sarah is an inventor who has a hoverboard that she actually managed to make one that doesn't blow up on you. And Preston is a magician. We're also introduced to Vincent and uh, some other guy. They're the Balkan Skull for the season. Uh, they're the Balkan Skull for the season. Although not as funny. Vincent tries on the hoverboard and it doesn't, and he just makes a foul of the, the uh, uh, magic show of Preston's. Now, Preston and Sarah see this thing coming down to Earth, so they go over and they find Brody being attacked by a monster, the one who won the game show. Now, Brody, Sarah, and Preston pull out their ninja stars, and then they get their ninja star morphers. And they become the red, blue, and pink Power Ranger. And they destroy the monster. And then they bury the Ninja Star Prism under rocks. Because the last thing you want to do to keep a mystical object from being stolen by intergalactic evil is bury it under rocks. But this thing has a mind of its own as it flies out and just goes somewhere. Presumably to find the other two or three rangers because there were six Ninja star pieces, or coins, or whatever they are. There were six in there. Red, yellow, blue, white, pink, and gold. And that ended part one. So then we come to part two, Forge and Steel. And this is more about Calvin and Haley. You see parts of Brody, Preston, and Sarah, and Redbot. But this is more about Brody. This is more about, uh... Calvin and Haley and Mick. Because Calvin and Haley run into Mick, and they're being attacked by Galvanax's latest monster on this real on this game show. Uh, he has razors for hands. I believe his name is uh, Razor Ripper. I believe. Uh, so they find out that the Ninja Steel is hidden in a trophy in the school with Dane under Dane's martial arts trophy. Now, at some point, Mick gets a 
uh, made the shop teacher at the school because the principal, I guess, has stupid Power Ranger adult syndrome, meaning that you're arguably the dumbest person in the universe. So, they fix mixed communicator thingy. It gets busted again. But the Ninja Power Prism comes in front of Haley and Calvin, and they pull out their things. And at that time, Brody, Preston, and Sarah show up, and they basically do, we get the morphing sequence, which is the, it's morphing time, and then it's ninja spin kind of thing. And you get the individual weapons. Haley and Sarah, because I guess they're girls, have bows and arrows. Preston has a claw. Uh... Calvin has a dagger, and Brody has a sword, since he's the Red Ranger and all that. And they put their powers together, they destroy the monster, but he gets giganticized, because that's what we're doing to make it grow now, is giganticizing. And we see the Zords. Brody's looks just like Redbot. Preston's is a, is a blue dragon. A blue dragon Zord, if you will. Sarah's is a train, Haley's is a dog, and Calvin, for some reason, has a dump truck, from what I see. I don't know what a dump truck's going to do, or how that fits in anything. I guess it's because he's a mechanic, I guess. At least it is playing into, I guess, their traits of what they do. That's nice. Now, they didn't form the Megazord yet. I guess that's for next week. Because this was to set up the status quo for the season, so... Uh, and they destroy the monster, and we get the new catchphrase of this season, that that's the monster's end, and it's a ranger win, or something like that. I don't, I don't pay attention to that thing. It's as annoying as the other things were. <laughs> so, and then they take this room at the school, the painting room that has apparently broken, and they make it their base of operations, since since Mick now is the shop teacher at the school, it's a perfect hideout and whatnot and such. Now, as Mick, Calvin, Preston, and Haley are working to make secret entrances to their base of operations, Brody and Sarah notice that the sixth thing, the sixth ninja star thing, was already gone, which means that it was already picked. Which means as a cliffhanger for when our sixth ranger shows up. You're dropping a cliffhanger about the sixth ranger two episodes into the season. That's got to be a record for Power Rangers about foreshadowing a ranger. Because generally they don't foreshadow a lot of sixth rangers. I mean, Dino Charge did because you knew there were more than ten energy gems, but... I mean, and... Uh, but in general, they don't do a lot of foreshadowing about it. They tend to just show up. Uh, so, And Mick is apparently the mentor of this season because he somehow knows all this mystical legendary, legendary stuff. So yeah, uh, I thought these two episodes worked really good. I thought that they got Ninja Steel off to a very solid start and we'll be interested to see where this goes uh, from here. Uh... This will be now weekly reviews for Ninja Steel. Uh, I might come up very early tomorrow or right before the Royal Rumble and give Royal Rumble predictions, or I might do that right after NXT TakeOver. I don't really know. So, if you like this video, like button down there, subscribe button down there, and thank you for watching. Bye.